digital literacy. When I talk about digital literacy, I'm referring to the efficient use and comprehension of technology and its tools. The broader term digital citizenship incorporates the constructs of digital literacy, but focuses more on acceptable, appropriate, and responsible behaviors using technology. And that's more of the do's and don'ts of technology use for students. We're gonna talk about that idea a little bit later, Right now, we're going to be looking at what it means to use technology and its tools to deepen learning and communication skills. So what does it mean to be literate? Well, on the surface, it's the ability to read and write. But we know that we need to ask our students to do more than just read and write with our curriculum material, especially with arts integration. Looking at disciplinary literacy, we can get a broader scope of what skills our students need to achieve for a deeper comprehension in a subject. Disciplinary literacy asks students to read, write, listen, speak, think critically, and perform in meaningful ways within the content area or areas. This multiple intelligence approach allows students a greater chance for success in demonstrating their learning and mastering those standards. We as teachers can also see the benefit of this type of learning and teaching. As we prepare our students for life beyond our classroom, we know that each of these skills will be valuable. So when we prepare our lessons on and around digital literacy, look for ways for students to learn and share their knowledge using the components of disciplinary literacy. Looking at how education has changed even over the last few years, we see a greater emphasis on technology skills and application. It has gone far beyond the days of keyboard lessons and those Oregon Trail games for education. Just stop and think for a moment about how much of your daily life is embedded with technology. You're watching your favorite show and you want to look up a fact or understand something or some part of the context better. Or maybe you've learned some exciting news and you want to share that with your friends and family. Do you phone call, video call, post on social media? Well, what platform are you going to use? or you want to learn something more, so you take a class, do some research, or watch some professional development videos, like right now. So the truth is that using technology as a learning tool takes some skills and knowledge, right? We didn't just wake up one day and know how to do all this. We should not assume that our students have these skills because they seem to know how to do or know about so many cool things that seem above our heads at first. When looking at digital literacy, there are four big areas to consider. Tool, content, media, and distribution or sharing. Let's take a look at those four areas closer. Tool. Teaching tools are the devices we choose to use to learn and communicate with and or to make things with. Depending on the goal, the tool will be different. Tools can include hardware and software. Hardware is computers, learning pads, cameras, and nowadays cell phones, smart boards, 3D printers, and other smart devices. Software can include Google Chrome apps, extensions, smart device apps, computer programs such as Adobe or online programs and websites and apps as well, including search engines. And this is important because that is a software. These tools we use to teach and learn need to be taught to our students so that they have the opportunity to grow their learning and demonstrate their learning and knowledge within the given task effectively. For example, if you are asking your students to create a digital slideshow using Google Slides or some other software about a topic they have learned or researched, we want to make sure that they understand how that software works. So we're going to take the time to show them all the ins and outs of what that program can do. This way, they have the ability to create and design the content in a meaningful way that is purposeful as well. And of course, specific look fors and grading expectations need to be taught and included in that criteria and discussion. The tool in this example is the slideshow online software or the hardware the students need to access that computer. I would argue both. Content is the second big idea. This is what subject your students are learning in. Broadly speaking, math, history, science, arts, economics, current events, people, etc. The content is your learning topic goal. In the last example, I referenced students needing to make a slideshow. So the tool was the slideshow software and the computer hardware. 
The content for this example would be what topic the students are learning and researching. This could be anything, but let's say it's a First People, First Nation lesson. The history or current events of the First Nations, First People would be the content. The next big idea is media. Media in digital literacy refers to the form of communication that is used or taken. This could be articles, <laughs> excuse me, this could be articles, interviews, photographs, artworks, audio files, musical recordings, books, videos, and so on. In our example, the media may be the options available for the students to research or it could be viewed as the presentation the students create to express their knowledge and understanding of the topic. Perhaps the students had access to local area resources or databases, video or audio interviews, curated text sets that you made, including websites and other materials. Just like we would need to teach our students how to use the slide software and the computer hardware, we need to teach them how to safe, safely search, vet sources, and curate materials and information ethically. The last of the four big ideas in digital literacy is distribution or sharing. For us as individuals in a digital age, we share ideas with technology all the time. And so do our students, right? This can be through the action of sending emails, texts, pictures, social media posts, etc. In our classroom, this can be through presentations, performances, wall galleries, turn and talks, online classrooms, flip grids, and so many others. In a hybrid or virtual teaching situation, the sharing becomes a major part of communicating the learning in terms of digital literacy. Looking at our example again, how could those students share their slideshow? Paying attention to the four big ideas will help guide you in writing your curriculum and lesson to incorporate the ideas of digital literacy responsibly and with purpose. So have some fun with it.